I know that the one thing that I've learned in doing this job is that the first question faculty always have is how can I grade that? Uh, so uh, that is the inspiration for today's uh, session because uh, living in the online world we're living in, um, how we grade that um, has lots of different answers. So we have three speakers today. So Russell Attridge, uh, pharmacy, right? Yes. That's what I thought. Okay, I had a momentary, oh my gosh. Uh, and then Stephanie Boswell from psychology and Suleiman Tech from mathematics. So uh, different angles on, on each of the subjects. And um, Russell, why don't you go ahead and get us started? All right. Well, thank you. Uh, and Adele, I just shared my screen. Yes, you did. Are you all able to see the PowerPoint slide? Yes. 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 Okay. I'm going to leave it out of presentation mode because uh, I don't know what it's going to do to my computer if I turn it to presentation mode. And I'm sorry if there's a little background noise. We have a raccoon above uh, my office, and we are getting the raccoon out. So, no. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a little exciting around here today. That's awesome. <laughs> yes, I, I'm very excited to get the raccoon out. I'm, I don't know if it's <laughs> So it's about to be homeless. Um, oh. <laughs> anyway, I, I created two little slides here just to, to help keep me on track. And um, so we'll kind of go over the situation for me, my approach to it, the exam and reflecting on it. And I may be in a, a slightly different situation. Uh, my course ended this week. So I just gave my final on Monday and okay. uh, graded it and returned it and there's statistics and everything. So I guess bullet number one there, the, the ambulance here, is, you know, I think we were probably all kind of uh, shocked how quickly we were turned into online educators. And uh, I heard a term that online teaching um, is not the same as what we're doing, which for me is more of emergency remote teaching is how I heard it described where, yeah. you mm -hmm. know, I'm not trained in online education. So this has been uh, interesting for me. But uh, I, I'm an administrator at the School of Pharmacy, but I'm also an associate professor. So I only teach one class. And it's uh, number two there. It's a three credit hour course. And it's a uh, medical literature evaluation course. And so there's some math and, and some new terms uh, for the students. Uh, and it's in their, in their second year of school. Um, I've only been teaching this class for two years. Uh, the previous instructor moved on to opportunities in 2018, so this is my second go round. The 96 down here, number three. So there are 96 students in the class. Mm. Uh, it's one section. And again, they're all second year pharmacy students. Uh, we have three exams in the course, so we're kind of on a block schedule, but this is a full term course. It starts in January and ends uh, end of April. Uh, first exam was in February. The second exam was the Friday before spring break. And uh, then the, the third and final exam was Friday. And as I thought about the approach, um, you know, the pace of information over the past six weeks has been incredible. And uh, so we're probably all doing this reading a lot, figuring out what we should be doing, trying to figure out what's the best. And these aren't my original thoughts, but these are kind of things that I've gathered from all the articles I've read is that I need to focus on keeping it simple. I needed to focus on showing students that I, I cared about them and their situations. And I needed to reevaluate what was essential. And some of these things you might say, well, you should be doing this anyway, Russell, <laughs> which is true. <laughs> I should be doing this anyway. <laughs> but given the situation, I don't know, I evaluated it through a different lens. I needed to relook at it and say, is this really as simple as it can be? Am I really showing empathy for what situations people could be in? And am I really teaching them and assessing them on what I really think is essential here? So in that vein, um, you know, I only had to develop one online assessment, but it's my biggest exam. It was basically a third of their grade. And uh, for, the, for number seven here under exam, one thing the School of Pharmacy did just as a whole to try to make them um, be a little more consistent for these students that are all kind of in the same classes all day is we said our assessments 
um, we use ExamSoft, so it's uh, an online exam software. And we said that all exams needed to be available for 24 hours for a student to start. So if my exam started on Monday at 2 p.m., then they had until Tuesday at 2 p.m. to start it. And they could start it at Monday at 2 or any time between then and Tuesday at 2. And so that was one kind of big change that the school made. Um, for me, I made it a four-hour exam. Normally, it's under two hours. So I, I doubled the exam time because I, I thought that uh, one, I changed some of the content and made it a little more application based. And two, at home, I'm getting interrupted by raccoon people and kids, and I can imagine the students have the same. So uh, I thought I need to be give them a little more time that if you know somebody says, "Mommy, I need to use the body," then they can go help take care of that and still be able to finish their exam. Um, I stuck to multiple choice and uh, that's what I normally do. That's what I stuck to for my final, but uh, I made it open book. So my entire exam was open book, which I've never done before uh, for this course. And so to kind of tell you what I changed, open book was probably the biggest. Uh, extended time was an important change. And then when I thought of questions, I did think about writing essays and doing short answers. I did, a, actually I did a few fill in the blanks. And so they weren't, uh, they weren't all multiple choice. But frankly, I haven't written prompts for these essays. I don't have rubrics to assess them. I don't teach with essays normally. And so I had to look back at my questions and say, Russell, you have to keep it simple or you're gonna be grading 96 essay tests when you've never done that before. And uh, so I'm, sometimes you look back and say, gosh, I made the wrong decision there, but this was a good one. I made a good decision. And um, I used about a third of the old questions that I used before. I altered about a third of old questions and kind of made them new with a different twist. And then I wrote about a third brand new questions. And I kind of notated them that I used them this spring so that it was very clear moving forward. My assumption now is that these questions are um, out. So uh, I will be continuing to alter these questions and um, you know, taking it from there. My reflection on it is that it, I kind of always, uh, I try to be optimistic and find the silver lining. And for me, this will change the way I teach. And it will change the way I teach in a positive way. Um, because I have always wanted to make this leap. And I've never had the time or the guts or whatever. And this has forced me to, to do something open book is what I decided to do. And now I'm going to give these questions back to future years as practice tests and use them along the way teaching the content uh, as, you know, this is last year's exam questions because we all get this question. What's your exam going to be like? What are the questions going to be like? Well, these are last year's questions. And so I'm, I'm excited to try that. I've always wanted to do it. And um, you can ask me next year how I feel at that time. <laughs> uh, but so I, I made a leap there. Uh, number 11, I was really, really proud of myself. And that maybe that's a little silly, but I felt a lot of pride because I felt like the student experience was good. So I felt like I was able to assess them on the content I wanted to assess them on, and that I feel good that they're leaving the class with what they needed. But I didn't get feedback that the situation was overly stressful, that they couldn't finish the exam, that they felt like it was unfair, that you know it, it, all, it all went well. And now I'll get course evaluations back in a few weeks, and maybe I'll get some new knowledge on how it really went for some of them. But overall, I just, I felt good about it. And sometimes you give exams and don't feel good. And sometimes you give exams and you feel real good. And, and this one I felt good about. The last thing on there is, is an upward trend. So as you might expect, when you move multiple choice, even when you change a lot of knowledge-based questions to application-based questions, I did get an increase in grades. And so just to show you, on this top row here, this is 2019 and the bottom row is 2020. And basically I'll just talk you through it, but exam one last year, the average was 84%. Exam one this year was 84%. Exam two last year was 
Exam two this year was 83%, so very similar between the two years. Last year, exam three was 79%, and this was a closed book exam. This year, very similar exam with different types of questions. 91% was the average, um, and, and this was open book. And so definitely the grades jumped, probably a letter grade. Uh, the, and I'm not a, we have education people here, so help me out, but the KR20, which is, you know, kind of a measure of internal consistency for your exam, um, that number stayed between 0.6 and 0.8, which from what I understand is reasonable for a course-based assessment. So the statistics on the questions were okay and the overall tests were okay, but, but the average uh, definitely went up. And so that's kind of an overview of what I did and I wanted to make sure there was time to see what questions you guys might have or um, anything about that experience. The, um, the red box, lower right hand corner, is that the only one that you did online and that's why it's in the red box? Yeah, that's the one from this semester. So it's the, okay. the oddball. So the first and the second ones this semester were done before hell broke loose. <laughs> yes, <laughs> a nice term. Yes, they were, they were done traditional fashion. They were closed book, uh, or in the way that I traditionally do them. They were, they were closed book and, and timed with about, you know, a certain amount per question. So it was, um, yeah, a different strategy. Hey, Russell, I have a question for you. Sure. So I'm thinking of doing um, an open book test for the first time myself this time around. And I'm, I'm not teach. I didn't teach spring two, but I'm going to do summer one. So my question is, um, since it's an open book test, did you still provide um, a study guide or, or did you all still um, did some in uh, just went over more or less what was going to be on the test, even though it was going to be an open book test? Uh, so the way I kind of handled it, Carmen, was I, I have them, I have learning objectives at the front of uh, all of the handouts that I use for them. Uh -huh. And I basically tell them and, and then I actually do it as I write all the questions based off those learning objectives. Right. So I didn't change my review strategy. Okay. I will say that what I've noticed over the past six weeks is I don't get as much, I have had more trouble getting people come to come to my, my, my virtual office. And so I didn't have as much pre-interaction. So actually we did less exam prep than normal mm. because normally I go sit up there. I, I schedule several sessions the week of the exam and say, I'm right. here, you know, in the classroom if you just want to stop by. Right. And uh, this time I did that, but I had the only people that came were the, the highest performers in the class. <laughs> and so they came with a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah, so I was actually nervous about that and you know I don't totally know what to make of it but it seems to be the general experience we've had at pharmacy that we are struggling to find ways to engage the whole class mm. um, compared to compared to normal and sure. I think it's just because it's been such a big shift. Yeah. Okay thank you. You're welcome. So I have a little question. So the the jump by one letter grade, um, good thing, bad thing, neutral thing. What's your sense? I I've thought about it and I don't really know. Mm -hmm. I decided I decided it's I'm uh, I don't know if it's a good thing, but I think it's I'm fine with it because and this is kind of what I've what I've tried to tell the students on the other stuff is, look, I'm going to ask the questions that I think are important. And if you get the question right, then if everybody makes 100 on the exam, but I felt like I wrote a good exam, then I'm fine with that. Yeah. Um, so that's kind of, you know, I do think some of it is because it was open book. Uh, and that may mean I need to adjust how I'm writing the questions a little bit, but I I'm overall okay with it. What, what are your thoughts when you see something like that? Well, uh, it was a genuine question. It wasn't a got, got me question. I'm, you know, I'm thinking they're just like multiple possible explanations. There are. You know, if there are a lot of fact-based questions, there's probably the, I'm looking it up, fact. I think as you move toward more application questions, it becomes less of a, less of a factor then. But those are hard to write. And, you know, and having a whole lot of those all at once, 
that's not anything I could do. It was, uh, it's funny because I did write a few. So for some of the very straight knowledge based questions, I used yeah. fill in the blank to mm -hmm. make people work a little more for it. Yeah. And one of them, it's, it's a definition straight from what we reviewed. It's, it's very, it's literally the same thing, but only a third of the class got it right because it kind of sounds like another definition. And so mm -hmm. I think a lot of people knew they thought they knew it and just answered it. Oh, and I had to do several double takes and go look at the notes. And I'm like, no, this is wrong. Two thirds <laughs> of them got it wrong. It's just what happened. So it was a little interesting that fill in the blank kept a few of them a little more on their toes, yeah. I guess. Yeah, that's, that is interesting. Anybody else have questions or comments? I do, Susan. Mm -hmm. Yes, Esmeralda. Uh, uh, for Mr. Atridge, um, I guess you must spend five or six hours rewriting these exams then? Yes. <laughs> it, That's I what I thought. Say, it might have been longer. Yeah, yeah. So yes, it was a, it's a, it was a significant time commitment. Okay. You know, there's it, it, uh, no getting around it. It's a big time commitment. But even aside from the open book online piece, being able to give students that exam back and having them work with it is really, really, a, you know, a good practice. It's really associated with gains in learning. Um, and it's horribly expensive at the faculty end, but a case of, you know, being pushed to do what you wanted to do. I know I'm I'm nervous about it, but but I'm I'm in. I'm already I jumped in and <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna try it. Other questions? Okay. Were the were the multiple yeah. choice questions like situational questions, Doctor Aldrich? Uh huh. The oh, multiple oh, choice questions were they like situations where they put the you asked like what would you do if um, you had this patient and you're subscribing this medicine or like situation questions? You know, what they were actually was a lot of, um, like I posted medical studies for them and put them on a blackboard. And then I mm -hmm. said, you need to, and this was a new thing I'd never done before too. Instead of having to put images everywhere, I just said, hey, here's the study, go pull it, pull, open the PDF and use it. And then they, mm -hmm. um, the expectation was that like for a lot of the application based multiple choice questions, I would say this is what the study found. Would they have still found this if these were the numbers in the statistics that came out? Or, so changing it up so that it's all there, but they're having to apply what they learned and changing some of the numbers in the study. So uh, it was it was still testing the concept and you really couldn't look it up like you could look up how to approach it, but you couldn't find the answer because they were they were abstract. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, last call for questions here. Okay, so uh, Russell, you want to stop sharing and we'll move over to Stephanie. Yes, thank you all. Yeah, thank, thank you, you, Russell. Thank you very much. That was really interesting. I have no screen share. Okay. Uh, <laughs> When uh, I found out we were going to be going to online, I had given um, one big exam in all of my classes. I usually have three. Uh, so I started to think about how I wanted to approach exams for the rest of the semester and did a lot of reading, um, like an online higher education websites. Mm -hmm decided to, instead of doing major exams, um, to administer weekly quizzes um, and like multiple choice online and then um, smaller uh, written assignments that they upload in a blackboard. Because mm -hmm. my exams will cover several chapters, they'll have some multiple choice and then they'll have some essay. Um, so I decided to just try to lower the stress on them um, under the circumstances and make several smaller weekly assessments that they turn in. Um, 
in some ways, I think that they do perceive this to be less stressful because the weekly assessments will be over one unit. However, in other ways, I think that they also find it more stressful because they are doing something every time they turn around. Yeah. Um, but by and large, the feedback that I have gotten from students has been uh, positive that they do feel less anxious about assessment after transitioning to the online environment. Um, one of the things that I used to help me go through this process was something that I had seen in one of the Monday morning mentors. I didn't know that it was called this, but it's called backward design. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> with, with under the circumstances, I thought, you know, there's not going to be a way that I'm going to be able to get all of the information that I want across to them and assess them in the ways that I'm used to. So I started to think backwards from the point of, you know, what are the core things that I want them to be able to know and concepts that I want them to be able to apply. Um, and then thought about how I would assess that and then try to figure out different ways that I could um, provide content to them about it. And every step through the process, I was pretty explicit with my students about why I was doing what I was doing. So that way they would feel like, okay, there's some sort of a plan that's, that's, that's happening here. Um, I got myself some little notes here. Uh, the quizzes, um, who just, Wait, Esmeralda, was it you? I think it had asked about how much time um, was committed to these quizzes. Uh, making a bunch of weekly quizzes and um, Russell, what you had said, hey, these questions are out there now. I wanted to make really large pools. And making large item pools, I underestimated how much time is involved with that. Um, that is easily a day long endeavor to make the item pools for a quiz. Um, instead of making one large item pool for a quiz, I make several smaller item pools that I break apart um, in the different topics within the chapter. So uh, I'm thinking about, um, I had a unit on correlation and causation. I had um, a separate pool for correlation identification, um, causation identification, um, examples of correlation, examples of causation, application to different types of research scenarios. So I say make several smaller pools and then put lots of items in there in each one. Um, and with the several smaller pools, it allows me to control the number of the different types of items that each student gets. So that way I know nobody is going to get through that quiz without getting X number of application items. Versus if I just dumped all of these items into one big pool, it's possible that a student could get through that quiz without ever having to apply concepts to a research scenario, which I would not be cool with. Um, so I've learned that that's um, really neat, but creating all of these different item pools is very time consuming. But a cool thing about Blackboard is you can go in and do item analysis after they've done the quizzes to see, okay, which items weren't performing well. And I can go in and adjust scores um, if I need to. Uh, I think I am going to use some of them as practice quizzes for when we go back to in-person. I already have practice quizzes in all of my classes, but I'm trying to look at this as an opportunity to just now have more practice quizzes for people to go and, and practice with the concepts. Um, as far as review questions, somebody had asked about review questions. I don't remember who it was. I did. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, as far as review questions, with, with all of my chapters, instead of trying to shove everything um, in a chapter, into one lesson. I have them broken apart um, in Blackboard into lessons that take maybe five to 15 minutes to get through mm -hmm. and just do a little bit at a time. And at the beginning of each one, I have a series of, I guess, learning questions. Mm -hmm. 
And then at the end of each one, I have a series of review questions. Mm. Well, I put these up there as narrated um, PowerPoints and PowerPoint will let you convert the content of your slides really easily to a Word document outline. So I also put all those up on Blackboard and then I put together a separate review sheet. Well, the separate review sheet of the review questions, mm -hmm. just one Word document that has all of the review learning questions and review questions from each of the individual PowerPoints. I don't know if they have figured that out yet that they already have the questions, but they seem pleased to have a separate file that has all of the same that they already have in one file. Mm -hmm. um, so it's actually, it's, it's pretty easy because I've been giving them the questions to learn and then questions to review with all along. And I think they just haven't realized that yet. <laughs> um, so then they, they're real pleased when you give them everything in one sheet. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, but my reviews are all, they're all in the form of questions. Um, Can I ask a question just to make sure I'm tracking? Because I use sure. pools too. So that means that you are, you have a bunch of questions and uh, Blackboard randomly gives question different questions to each student mm -hmm. that's working yeah i was initially concerned because i also i keep these open for a 72 hour period yeah mm -hmm. and i was concerned that the people who take them first would tell the on the first day the people that take them on the last day oh the questions are like this but i yeah. have not seen some sort of big upward trend in scoring between people who take it on the first day and people who take it on the last day. And the item pools are pretty big. Yeah. Also, something that I've noticed is that their performance on the quizzes, even though I tell them, y'all, they're open notes, open book, their performance on the quizzes that we have started doing online are very consistent with how they were performing on things. Yeah. Or we online, I use online and they didn't have access to their books. Yeah, I used online quizzes before all of this, and I found the strong students got big scores, the weak mm -hmm. students got small scores. It was just amazing to me. People are staying pretty consistent. Yeah. Um, so tell me how using these multiple pools works. I'm used to just going in, I click on pools, I click on randomly assign, and I'm done. So there's obviously another step here, right? Oh, it's great. Number one, Kathy had sent out a link, I think in one of the teaching tips yeah. that somebody had sent to her about how you can write your item pool in Word and then put it into yeah. this website and it spits it out. Oh, praise God. I'm so glad I found that. Way less clicking. Um, so I make several Word files where I put, I, you know, correlation um, identification items. So yeah correlation application items um, and use this website to convert them all into separate Blackboard pools mm -hmm. and then build the pool in Blackboard or, or what is it create a pool where you type the name in and then it asks you to upload the questions so then I upload them so then I go to um, I think it says build test mm -hmm. and going through memory here I think it's the yeah. second option maybe that says find questions okay create random block okay random block it'll let you I'm keep to do the different topics yeah and it'll let you assign multiple random blocks to one test okay. or i can then set it to pull pull a certain number of items and then it also lets you assign a different um, amount of credit. So like an application item could get yeah. more credit than just a, can you identify this term? Okay. Yeah, great. This, this has all been a giant learning curve for me because before the semester I had used the pools before but didn't realize that I could take one quiz and have it pull, create multiple pools for it and determine the number of items from each pool and how many points each one would be worth. Oh, you are so far ahead of me, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm the learning curve this semester. It, it, mm -hmm. 
please, now that I know how to do these things. It's like, oh, this is exciting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and it allows you to make a better quiz. You know, I just yeah. kind of rationalized that these were really low stakes. So if somebody got an easy, particularly easy or hard one once in a while, it would all work out in the end. But uh, your, your approach is better. <laughs> <laughs> trying to be systematic and scientific about it. Yes, yes, it has that sort of feel to it. What and subject do you teach? What is your right. discipline? Psychology, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Other questions for Stephanie? Stephanie, did you have any, like if you're giving an exam, most students, oh, will there you are. Uh, most students will show up to the exam, but if, if you're doing lots of quizzes, did you have any issues with people not completing some quizzes and how did you handle some of those? Every so often, um, you know, some of the quizzes in my classes, everybody takes it, but there's different weeks, you know, across all the classes where there'll be one person or maybe two people that did not do it. Uh, one of the things that I do, and I'm beginning to figure out that they do not pay attention to this, but every day I send out an email that says, here are today's reminders. <laughs> this quiz is open. It will close at this time. This assignment is due. It is due at this time. This quiz will open on this day. Um, I'm beginning to realize that most of them do not pay attention to my daily reminder emails, but I send out those emails and then Blackboard, I've learned, uh, you, has a send reminder function that will prompt students that haven't turned in an assignment yet. And the email that Blackboard sends out actually sounds pretty scary. Much really? Scarier than my friendly, <laughs> don't forget it, we have a quiz open. <laughs> Uh, so I've started making more use of that and been getting response from students who have gotten that email. They're like, I did the quiz. It's like, yeah, because I sent, but I sent you the reminder before you did the quiz. Um, so the Blackboard reminder function sends a kind of scary sounding message. Um, but yeah, I just try to push lots of reminders to them. I don't oh. start paying attention to them, many of them. I never heard of that reminder thing either, but I saw yeah. it in one of the videos that it might have been something Susan or Kathy sent out, but I there was some video talking about it and I thought, dang, I wish I would have yeah. <laughs> explored it, that the before. The email that it sends out sounds like oh, it's, it's <laughs> I'm coming for you. <laughs> you know, another approach if you have a whole lot of quizzes um, is just to drop the one lowest score. And mm -hmm. I send out the reminders, I send out the shame, shame you to do that. You know, then I also don't have to engage in all those arguments about why somebody did or didn't do the quiz. I just say, huh, you know. And you know, one time I figure it doesn't matter if there's a pattern, they're gonna they're gonna get penalized. I did um for my classes set up a extra credit comprehensive quiz oh. that they will have open um, next week. Mm -hmm. um, after they take their last quiz that's part of the test, the day after that, an extra credit comprehensive quiz will open. Um, that is, I set up to pull randomly from the, the other different quizzes that we have done. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I posted, an announcement about that and send out an email about that and we'll continue to send out emails about that. And I'm, I'm really curious come this time next week or rather the end of next week, yeah. how many of them will have done this extra credit quiz? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was the question I was going to ask you. <laughs> I'm, I'm waiting to see because it, it, you know, could compensate for somebody that mm -hmm. didn't do one. Sure, yeah. Other questions for Stephanie before we move on to Sir Lemon? Okay, uh, Sir Lemon, you're on. Yep. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Hello. Good afternoon. Hello. Hi. I guess, uh, 
everybody have a nice learning curve. We are all experimenting <laughs> and trying to then time didn't work. Let's change a little bit. <laughs> uh, uh, I am also doing that as well. And right after this, uh, the spring break, normally I was uh, planning to give my second exam. So, so we, they couldn't take it in class. So it was kind of uh, bad for them. But I wait uh, another week, let them to settle down with this remote learning experience. And I postponed my uh, second exam a little bit later. And uh, the, for the, uh, I am uh, piloting the canvas for, uh, for, for the semester. And mm -hmm. uh, typing the math equations in the canvas, uh, I was learning, but I was not feeling that much comfortable. And at the same time, I was planning to use the lockdown browser and respondents monitoring as well for the exam, uh, for my exam. And I type, I have a, my, uh, like a separate software, uh, scientific uh, writing math, uh, technical writing software, it's called LaTeX. And I normally type my exams in that software and then uh, export as a PDF. And I upload it to the, to the to my exam but when they open with the lockdown browser it doesn't open it because i need to introduce to the lockdown browser my exam link so i put my exam in a, a one drive and then put the link and i was trying uh, two things for that uh, and also for my homework i used the uh, online website it is called webassign and each students get different, uh, the similar problem with, with, with different numbers. And I, have, I would like to also experiment how they will be able to whether do the, the problems on that website in the exam as well. So trying two things. But when I'm trying, I'm, uh, I was giving this as a mock exam. First, I wanna see how things goes and then which one works and which one is gonna work. And uh, to take the, the exam from the web assign also, I need I, I realized that I need to also define it into the uh, lockdown browser as well. So, and I cannot uh, test it out like how it looks like as a student because I have the instructor right. And when I try to take it using the lockdown browser, everything looks all right. But when students trying to take it, they said, I can, we cannot see the questions. Yeah. <laughs> we cannot have access to this. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I give up using the web assign part because most of them didn't have, uh, couldn't get access. And I just did the PDF portion of it and it worked well. And in the PDF, I put all questions in one page and everybody have the same question. And uh, I had a like one set time for the exam and I give a little longer than the usual. So instead of seven to five, I give 90 minutes. And they need to have their solution on uh, solve the problem on a paper, and then they need to scan and upload it to the to the website to the Canvas website on the exam, and they take the exam using the lockdown browser. And a uh, lot of them couldn't upload it, and then they're calling me, and then I said like, go ahead and email me your scans. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, that was, and at the be in the beginning of the exam also, I put a lot of instruction how they are going to do, what kind of rules they need to follow. And because it's for the math problem, there are a lot of websites, when they just type the equation, they can just get the solution. And for that reason, I use the lockdown browser and responding monitoring system. And the course average uh, is better than the first exam average. So uh, I thought like they're more comfortable and things are better at home. That's good. Maybe I thought better than face to face. <laughs> <laughs> so I was trying to see the positive side of it. <laughs> and uh, later on, our Dean actually sent the link which he got uh, from uh, another, his colleague, I guess. There's a website called chag.com, I guess. Mm -hmm. The students post, can po post the question and then uh, they pay a monthly fee to that website and then mm -hmm. uh, somebody answer their questions. Mm -hmm. and, and he said like, just if you're curious, just search your statement of your, one of your question. 
And I was using Respondents Monitor for the exam. And I just searched one of the questions and the screenshot of my exam was there. <laughs> I said, wow. Uh, so you take the screenshot, you post it to the website, you get the response, and then you write your solution from there. So, but it's a learning curve, as I said. So now for the final exam, I changed my strategy a little bit different. So I don't post the problem as a, like one PDF page. I use the, the pool that the, the Stephanie was using. So now I created the question pools. I am gonna ask like 15 questions. And for each question, there are question pools. Very similar, sometimes different numbers, sometimes same concept, but tweaking a little bit. So I'm planning to use the question pool. So everybody is getting uh, more or less different questions. Uh, and for that, I'm using the uh, publisher's question bank, which we can, I can import to the canvas and then create the question pools from, from there. And, and I'm also planning to you uh, ask like one uh, reflection question rather than just solve this equation and do that so a reflection question is one thing that I'm that I'm planning to uh, experiment in this in this one kind of like essay question, reflecting on some concept they learn in this class or what is the the most difficult concept that you learn or what is the most exciting topics you learn in this class type of reflection question, and and uh, I will I'm going to use again the the lockdown browser for my exam. Uh, but at the same time, I want them to uh, log in with their cell phone to Zoom. Uh, I have two points to connect them uh, through Zoom them. One is discouraging them to use their cell phone to use to do something else. Hmm. And the other thing is, if they have any uh, question, they cannot ask me normally face to face, they can ask me and then I can explain and address their question. So one reason is this. So uh, the second reason is that, so to help them out if they have any question. And the third reason is if they have any technical problem before the exam or after the exam, when they are scanning, so I can help them out as well. And uh, this is the, the general structure that I am uh, planning to uh, follow for my final exam. And some other things that I learned I need to be more flexible uh, for the exams and for the assignments. Normally, I put the rules and, and there are penalties for that, but I stretch that little bit because of this, this distance learning experience. Like I g gave a couple of makeup exams for the students who couldn't take because of technical problems or for different uh, reasons. So I tend to give more uh, makeup opportunities send reminders who missed the quizzes uh, or any assignments. I keep following them up and see if you have any question or problem, just let me know. Or if you have any other uh, familiar things, let me know as well. I can extend your assignments further. So I try to be more flexible to the students. Excuse and me, I have a class, I'm sorry. Bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Bye. And the, the, another thing is before the second, before my uh, uh, midterm exam and before the final exam, I give them mock exam, just them to feel like how the exam technical part of the exam will look like. So mm -hmm. uh, the mock exam idea I think would work well. So they appreciate it and then uh, if they have any questions, they can uh, ask me and I give like a couple of days for the mock exam. And I tend not to grade for the math content rather than just feel them comfortable how the exam looks like basically. And, and also uh, I schedule Zoom meetings before uh, two or three Zoom meetings before the exam to answer their uh, questions, the math questions, as well as technical part of the, the exam, the structure of the exam. So the Zoom meetings, uh, like eight, 10 people are coming to, to each of them. Not all of them are coming, but at least, uh, and I record that meeting and I post it for those who couldn't make the, that meeting, they can, uh, watch the, they can watch the video. 
And another thing that I tried uh, this semester is the concept quiz. So normally I was giving in-class quiz to the students. I still, I was giving that quiz to them, but that's a take-home quiz. Uh, the concept that they learn in, from that section and they just want to apply it to the, that problem that I gave them. But the, the, the idea of the concept quiz, uh, just to, to measure whether they understand the, those concepts rather than just solve this equation, solve that equation, uh, I try to write the questions in a way that it measures, indirectly measures whether the students understand that concept. And it is really time consuming. And I spend hours and hours to write those questions. Like just one quick example, I put a couple of like four or five statements uh, from that section that they learn. And, and then uh, what, which, uh, and let's say statement one, statement two, three, four, and five, uh, which answer gives the most uh, correct answer uh, in the following choices. So they need to understand each concept and then they need to tell whether this, this statement is a true statement or, not, or, or false. So one, two, three, only one, only two. So like the statement two might be true, to, true but it may not be the only true statement. They need to check other statements as well. Uh, I start doing that concept quiz and I'm planning to do that even if we go to the face-to-face. -face. And for that one, it's open notebook. They can read the notebook, they can watch the videos, but in order to understand, they need to think about it. It's not just plug in the number and get the result. So a concept quiz is one thing. And I haven't done this, but I would like to do the reading quiz as well. It's not like in-depth as the concept quiz, just when they look at the definition easily, they can understand the idea. The, my intention with the reading quiz would be just to expose them the material before they start everything out. And, and another change that I did from the second exam to the final exam is in the second exam, I put the long instruction in the, at the beginning of the exam that they need to understand it and then start working on the uh, exam and then follow the instruction how to upload the, 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 uh, their solution to the uh, canvas. Now I created all these parts as a as separate assignment on canvas. So uh, final, leg, uh, final exam policy assignment. So they are gonna, they need to do that before the actual exam. So they go read the instruction and then just, just click, I understand the final exam policy. And then uh, another assignment up, uh, I was, they were uploading the solution within the lockdown browser, but they were having some technical problems and then it was taking from their exam time. Now I separated from the exam uh, I said, after you complete your exam within 15 minutes, you need to sub upload your solution. So I created for that another uh, separate exam. So final exam has three pieces, policy assignment before the exam, actual exam at the time that they are gonna take, and then the uploading their solution after the exam. So, and the, the same structure, uh, I have the same structure for the mock exam. So they have like for five days to try out how things works on the on the mock exam. So this is pretty much the, the structure that I learned and I keep learning it uh, for my calculus class. Questions for Suleiman? I have two. Yes. Good. You go first, first and I've got one. Have you had, I'll give you both questions. Um, my first one is, have you had any trouble using Respondus with people who have Chromebooks? Because I heard that they don't play nicely, which is why I was not using it this semester. And then how in the heck do you proctor a whole bunch of people taking a test over Zoom at the same time? I absolutely want to hear about that. <laughs> so uh, the second one, uh, I don't know how that's going to go that I will try in the final exam. <laughs> uh, and so normally the proctoring part is the, the responders record itself. So not necessarily uh, I will uh, watch them for the Zoom. So like, as I said, I have three, uh, three objectives. One of them is just to answer any individual questions. 
and I need to learn from Caesar how to use the breakout rooms for that maybe oh, okay. not to distract the students and then I will move that students to the breakout room and then student can ask question to me and then like I couldn't understand this equation I couldn't understand this problem so I can address or any technical issues I couldn't open my lockdown browser what should I do what should I shouldn't do so or I couldn't scan my solution <clears throat> so those type of things and what was your first question have you had any trouble with people who have Chromebooks and, and uh, Respondus? I didn't have any problem with the lockdown browser uh, uh, issue. So they all opened and worked, worked fine. Okay. And I have two students, they don't have webcam. So what I do is I uh, assign a, a separate exam for them. And for the exam two, I was proctoring them through the Zoom. So they don't have webcam, but they have the cell phone. And I, and I gave that flexibility and I will do that for the final exam as well. And another tip maybe, uh, I, I am teaching two sections of calculus class this semester. And thanks to Adela, we merged those two sections. Instead of posting things separately, I merged them. But when the exam nice. date, uh, they, uh, some of them, they, they have a conflict. So I give the exam two times. So what I did, I give the same exam and I put a password to the uh, responders. So to start the exam, they need to take, uh, type the password. I only give the password to the students who are gonna take the, uh, the early in advance. And then for the second group of students, I emailed this, the, the password like, about 30 minutes before the before their exam. So that's another uh, prevention thing that I tried to use. But with this uh, pool idea, I think I can just start, I, I'm not gonna give any password because a lot of them will get different questions anyway. So I don't worry about that. Now you had mentioned using a textbook published pool. Yes. All that is on the internet. Yeah. Uh, it's 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 math so it's changing the numbers so if they understand the how to solve that certain type of equations i am fine okay. with that mm -hmm. so it's not exactly the same question i generate with the new numbers okay and also i am planning to give some uh home cook questions as well like like concept questions one or two mm -hmm. Suleiman, how many how many people do you have in your classes? Forty. Forty. Forty students, and in the exam too, uh, they uploaded and they emailed it to me. Organizing those solutions were like took my three or four hours. So because they some of them, I, I keep saying I keep told them, but uh, they didn't upload all your like five six page solution they send six separate like images and I cannot print that out. So I print out and then grade based on that. Now in my final policy said, if you don't, you need to submit single PDF file. You need to scan all your pages. I gave sep like separate instruction. How can you use the Microsoft Office lens and, and some other uh, uh, scanning applications. If you can, if you don't upload single page, there will be deduction. So if you don't, penalize I think they will not do it so I'm pushing them maybe I will not penalize too much but at least I'm pushing them to submit single documents uh, otherwise the management of that is hectic so it takes four hours to just to get ready to grade the exam well I like the idea of using the the breakout rooms for zoom they yeah, uh, we've used those for a few things and I thought they worked surprisingly well so I think it'll work for, I wouldn't have thought to do that, but I think it's a really cool idea. They, there was a pharmacy thread through some, you know, um, discussion board and they were kind of doing what you described where they were monitoring via zoom and they were, they recruited some other proctors and were trying to have 10 to 12 people max per monitor. But, um, I'm interested to see how it goes. I mean, I think it'll work. It just, it, it could be interesting with yeah. recording. And uh, I don't know, uh, one of the Caesar or uh, 
Kathleen might help or the Terry. So for the responders monitor, can I monitor live? Or I need to watch the recording later? You have to watch the recordings later, yeah. Dr. Tech. I see. Did you watch the recordings? Did you watch the recordings of the last one? Uh, well, they I, or, the, or the flags where they flagged it. Yeah, the, the, like they had they have flag. If if they do this, they put flag. So I they keep do, watching, yeah. but yes. that's that's where they're uploading it to that website. Yeah, I I watched flag, the flag but every everywhere is flag. So. <laughs> I think, yeah, that's the thing. I think um, maybe they don't understand that, but but really with monitor, it is tracking your eyes and tracking where you look. And if you look, you, it is gonna um, mm -hmm. flag. If you look off the screen or anywhere, you know, cause they're looking at their phone, you know what I mean? They're looking at their phone, they're looking at somebody else. Mm -hmm. That's what they do. That's what my- I, I look through. And the, the point of my using lockdown monitor is just to discourage them to, to cheat. Pros, pro ones, they will cheat anyway. So, but at least if it discourages some of them, that's good. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Stephanie, get back to your original question about lockdown browser and Chromebook. Mm -hmm. The only way that can happen is if they use, is if they access the VLAB. And it's very clunky and very slow. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. 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 And they, Chromebooks. Chromebook, they go into VLAB and then they can use Respondus? Yes. Just just lockdown browser, not monitor. Just lockdown browser, not monitor. Okay. Mm. I had heard that there were and, and had read online that they were just not compatible. So I was like, mm -hmm. no, I don't even yeah, they're, know. They're, they're, like, yeah, I mean it's not it's not a good situation. It's not a good either, but yeah, it can work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not optimal for sure. Normally, uh, the the web assign that I use for the homework, they have also lockdown browser, but they don't have like the monitor. So, mm -hmm. and I was try to use UIW's lockdown browser within that one, but it didn't work out. So I cannot use lockdown browser in another lockdown browser. It didn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> I pushed I pushed the publisher guys, but they said, we don't know, call the responders. I emailed the responders. They said, sir, you, you cannot do that. So. <laughs> Otherwise, I didn't, I, it, creating pools in the web assign was is much more easier. I don't need to import anything yeah. out. So it was much yeah. more easier for me. Yeah, but, that's uh, a very elegant solution, I think. Yeah. Susan, you said you had a question or a it got answered. I was asking, it was the equipment question. Mm -hmm. Did everybody have the equipment they needed to use monitor? So just two of them didn't have it. And then I just connect them through via Zoom. So it worked out well. You know, it was good for you. I mean, well done you to use that office lens to scan. Yeah, I give detailed instruction. I record, I, I, uh, I, I take a separate uh, uh, computer. I pretend student, I recorded every single part of how to take the exam. So how to have you uh, in, uh, in, install the lockdown browser. So <laughs> the iPad, my daughter, she recorded. And then how to have to go to the computer, how you <laughs> install it, how to open it, and then how to access the exam. And then after you finish exam, how you s scan with your Office Lens application. It's gonna upload your OneDrive, and then you will upload. <laughs> I post the video. It's just fifteen easy steps. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why? So um. I tried th three different ways to explain it. I write uh, uh, description step by step. I thought like this generation may not read those steps. Let me try the video. They they appreciate the video better than the steps procedure. <laughs> true. It's true. We and, might need to borrow some of your videos, for heaven's sakes, after all that work. Yeah, and I, and I, normally I write the uh, steps in a Word document and then uh, p, p, upload as a PDF, but it was, I guess, too much for them. And then I create a module, how to take exam with the lockdown browser. I create step-by-step -step modules. Hmm. How to install it, how to take the exam, how to upload separate pages in the, in the module. Nice. That's a lot of work right there. That is a lot of work. You know, you know, just prepping the students for success. So, yeah. But they, they appreciate uh, and 
like some of them uh, keep telling and uh, their appreciation. So I hope they will pass and get good grade and move on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> The name of the game. Please, please do well and move on. <laughs> yes, we don't want you to see again the same class next semester. <laughs> Doesn't mean we don't like you, but we want you to move on. Right. Okay. Well, it is about three o'clock. Thank you all very much. Lots of interesting ideas, and uh, I know I appreciate it. I'm sure others do too. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you.